Hello and welcome to Ag Dealer TV. I'm your host again this week, Scott Garvey. Well, spring is here, sort of, and that means seeding operations are going to get started before too long and heavy farm trucks are going to start logging a lot of miles. But with the warmer weather also comes stepped up enforcement from police and transport compliance officers to make sure that heavy trucks are fit to be on the road. So you may even if you don't have to go across a provincial way scale, encounter a random roadside inspection, and officers may do a safety inspection on your truck. One of the most common violations and safety failures on heavy trucks is braking systems. So to help you prepare for those roadside brake inspections, we've come here to Buffalo Driver Training to help us understand exactly what will be required on your truck if you go through a random heavy truck brake inspection. First, before we start doing an inspection on a truck, let's familiarize those of you who may have forgotten or because of uh, agricultural exemptions, uh, drivers who've never had to take an air brake test or training to, to drive an air brake equipped vehicle on the farm. Let's take a look at what the system, how the system operates? What are the components? We'll use Buffalo Driver Training's classroom air brake mock-up to help you understand what goes on in the system. First of all, engine mounted air compressor builds pressure, sends it through an air dryer where most of the air is taken out of the system. Air then goes to the wet tank where the rest of the moisture in the compressed air condenses. Now this tank should be drained on a daily basis. There will be water in it from condensed moisture in the air. From there, the air goes to a primary and a secondary tank. Now just like a hydraulic brake system, air brake systems have two, safe, two systems for safety, a primary and a secondary. Once air pressure is built in there, when you make an application, on your foot valve, air is then sent to brake chambers. These will be on the rear, these are type 30s, and up front here, type 20s. Air goes into the brake chamber, pushes out the push rod against the slack adjuster, the slack adjuster turns a shaft that pushes the drums out, or the, wheel, uh, the brake shoes out in contact with the drums. If you have a drum system and even though there's uh, new uh, air disc systems on the market on newer trucks, most of the trucks out there still use disc brakes. Now what goes on in here, let me show you. This is a mock-up of a brake chamber. This lower part is the service brake chamber. Air pressure comes in, presses against this rubber diaphragm, forces the push rod out. So a proportional amount of air is set by the foot valve right there. Comes in here and makes a proportional amount of pressure on the push rod. Now these are piggy, they're called piggyback chambers because on the top is a second chamber for the parking brakes. Now this chamber works exactly opposite to the service brake chamber. In this case, this massive spring is what pushes on the push rod to apply the brakes. When you release the parking brake by pushing in the yellow button, air fills up this chamber, compresses the spring, pulls the push rod back, and releases your brakes. Now the type of brake chamber you have, of course, determines how much allowable push rod travel you can have. There are short stroke and long stroke, long stroke versions of both the common Type 30, which are on the drive axles and trailers of most highway trucks and type 20s, which are smaller and on the front. If you don't know which is which, there's a quick way to tell. Take a look at the inlet ports for the airlines. If they're square, like this one, that's a long stroke. If they're round, like this one, that's a short stroke. Now, if you're wondering why these are called type 30s and fronts are called type 20s, and there are others out there, type 44s, all kinds. 
the type number indicates the amount of square inches of area on the diaphragm. So type 30 has 30 square inches of diaphragm, type 20, 20, and so on. So if you imagine a truck with 100 pounds of, pressure, of air pressure in the system, makes a full application on a type 30, that's 100 PSI times 30 square inches, that's 3,000 pounds of force coming out on the push rod. Now there's uh, one other thing to remember. Slack adjusters here are designed to take the slack out of your brake line system. There are two types. There is the manual, like this one, with a nut on it, that has to be manually adjusted to set the proper shoe distance from the drum. Now in some jurisdictions, you may need a special uh, endorsement on your license to be able to do this. There is also, and more, more common now on the modern trucks, is the self-adjusting slack adjuster. It adjusts itself to take out the slack in the system. But you must still pay attention to it. The start of your day, you should make six full brake applications above 90 PSI. Make the brake application, hold it for a moment, and then release six consecutive times. That's what it takes to get an automatic slack adjuster to set up its position properly. If you don't do that, even with an automatic slack adjuster, your brakes could be out of adjustment. And believe it or not, even with automatic slack adjusters these days, enforcement officers still find a lot of brake systems out of adjustment. Officers will measure the amount of pushrod travel on each brake chamber to determine whether they're within specification or not. Here's how you do it. With the parking brakes released and the truck secure with blocks to make sure it doesn't roll or move during inspection, take a piece of chalk, make a mark where the pushrod enters the brake chamber. Then take a ruler and measure from the brake chamber to the mark. You also need to have a working low air warning device in your truck and it needs to consist of both an audible alarm and a visual alarm like a light on the dashboard. It must activate at no less than 55 psi. Some really old trucks used to have what was called a wigwag. It would uh, be a flag that would fall down in front of you on the windshield and alert you to a low air warning condition. If you have a truck with one of those, you've probably had it for a while. Another test will be determine whether your system has any major leaks in it or not. If you're a straight truck, that is a truck without a trailer, you can lose up to three PSI per minute on a service brake application. If you're a truck in one trailer, four PSI. A truck with multiple trailers, six PSI. So with the truck turned off, service or park brake rather released simply gonna press the foot pedal hold it and watch your air pressure gauge of course officers will look at the general condition of the truck and they'll look at braking systems like these brake pots and hoses and and all the other components that make up a braking system those will all have to be in good condition well, hopefully that gave you a bit of insight into what it takes to ensure your heavy truck's braking system is compliant and safe. Thanks again to Buffalo Driver Training in Winnipeg, Manitoba for the use of their trucks and their school facility and their expertise. And thank you for watching. Be sure to check back here again to Ag Dealer TV.